miracles are either coming or going at all times. I agree. And that many times the miracle has already come and it's there, but it's it's lost in the clutter. Right. So, you know, traditionally as church people would pray for, you know, God to do something and, and travail and pray and fervent prayers, truly the miracle is, was already, it, it was already there. It, Before it you already, ask, I've already given. So powerful. <laughs> it was there. Peace and riches, blessings. I am Michael B. Beck with the host of Take Back Your Mind. Peace and richest blessings, everyone, and welcome to Take Back Your Mind. I am your host, Michael B. Beckwith. And as you've heard me say, if you've been watching the different episodes, the podcast is about literally, actually, metaphorically, taking back our mind. We have a mind, but we're not the mind. We have a body, but we're not the body. We have things, but we're not those things. We are pure awareness, and our mind is often a set of programs of which some of the program we didn't even do. Some of that program has come from the status quo society in which we are living. The programs may have come from how we were raised, particular experiences and the interpretation of those experiences. All programming is not good and all programming is not bad. But eventually we went life-affirming programming in our mind. We have to take back the mind so that the mind becomes an avenue of an ever-expanding awareness of that which is true and that which is real. Reality with a capital R, not small r reality, which is what we create on a regular basis through our thinking, our misguided notions. We create an experience of reality, but reality is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Welcome to Take Back Your Mind. In just a few moments, I'm going to have in person with me today, Brother Tim Story, powerful spiritual teacher. He's been in over 70-something countries. He's touched millions of people in a very uplifting, healing, inspiring way. Can't wait for you to meet him if you don't know who he is already. But right now, we're going to begin with our life question of the week. It's coming from Pam from Orlando, Florida. She says this, Recently, my brother announced to our family that he has met someone and will be moving to another country to be with her. He has asked us to be happy for him and to support him in his decision. We love and care deeply for him and want him to be happy, but... We are also saddened by the thought of losing him. How can I tell him while that I'm happy that he has found someone? I'm skeptical about him leaving the country and family to be with someone he doesn't really know well enough for him to make such a life-changing decision and to give up so much. I can feel, Pam, your love for your brother. It's beautiful. You say you're saddened by the thought of losing him. You're not losing him. He's moving to another country. He's found someone that in this particular moment of his life, he loves and he feels that she loves him. So in other words, he's going on an adventure, an adventure of love, an adventure of moving to a different country. He's breaking free from the present paradigm and the present status quo of his life. You want to be enthused about that. And of course, you're going to miss him. That's just a part of human experience. Oftentimes, family members move to different parts of the world, different parts of the, our country. Jobs, college, things like that take people away. And so this is not really about him. It's more about you. So what do you want to do? You want to let him know how much you love him, how much you're going to miss him, and then you're going to release the word losing him. He's just going to another country to be with someone he loves. 
You want to hold him in prayer because you just said something very important. You're saying that he's marrying somebody that he doesn't know that well. Well, maybe the heart knows. Maybe the soul knows. And maybe he would be on an adventure of self-discovery that may contain sadness, it may contain joy, it may contain bliss. You don't know, but this is his journey. His journey will be easier if you let him know that you support his journey. It would be easier for you and it would be easier for him. Let's just say, in the years down the line, it doesn't work out the way he thought it was going to. He still has his family to come home to. Why? You supported him and you loved him. And if it does work out beautifully, you loved him and you supported him. You know, and there are plane tickets going both directions. You know, you can fly and visit him, he can fly and visit you. At family reunions in different parts of the world. Expand your awareness of this. Let's eliminate we're saddened because we're losing him. No, he's growing into himself. Celebrate that. And then you go inside of yourself and ask, how can I grow into a greater version of myself? Thank you, Pam, for writing in. Have a beautiful day. Peace and blessings, everyone, and welcome back. As I mentioned earlier, I have Brother Tim Story with me today. We're talking about the individual who curates the miracle mentality, the individual who, if you don't know who he is, I mean, he's been on every platform, whether it's uh, Oprah, whether it's uh, Steve Harvey. He's helped millions of people on this planet with his affirmative, life-giving presence, first of all, that curates into dynamic teachings. He's assisted many, many people. We were together recently in Miami, Florida at the Forbidden mm -hmm. Knowledge event, a wonderful event that Billy Carson put together. And I had already said, I want Tim's story on my podcast. Then when I saw him, I said, <laughs> let me lock this up right now. <laughs> anyway, Brother Tim, welcome. What a privilege. You know, as a person who we are both out there helping, assisting people, um, I see you as a pioneer and a trailblazer. So I feel like I'm with the Michael Jordan of what we do. <laughs> you know who said that one time? Well, first of all, like Oprah calls me a maverick. She says yes. he's a spiritual maverick. Uh, I'll think of his name in a moment, but I, I did a podcast and he was asking me about surrender. His name will come to me mm -hmm. in a minute. Um, he was asking me about the difference between, okay, this is make something happen with our mind and surrender. Yes. And I was breaking down surrender to him, the power of it. And he says, man, is it Michael Jordan of metaphysics? <laughs> there's, there's, there's no doubt about it. No doubt so, about so, it. Well, let's get to you. Yes. Which give us a little bit of your personal story. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know some things happened when you were like three years old. Yeah. I know, you know, you've evolved to, uh, you know, you've traveled how many countries? Have you Seven, been? 78 now. You've been in 78 mm -hmm. countries bringing the living word to all of these beautiful people. Yes, you know, thank how, you. What happened with, with you? So uh, born in Los Angeles. So Compton, right? Compton, California. Yeah. Uh, Compton, California. Um, <clears throat> Mother worked at a place called Winchell's Donut Shop. You, wow. You've at least driven by some. <laughs> well, back in the day when I wasn't <laughs> too conscious about the food, I had a few Winchell's yeah. Donuts. <laughs> so mother worked at uh, Winchell's Donut Shop. Father worked with Bethlehem Steel. But uh, they did their best. But we had seven people in a two-bedroom apartment in Compton. Mm. And, you know, uh, doctor, to, to me, that was just cramped and crowded. Right. So that, that was our surrounding was cramped and crowded. But the thing that was so beautiful is we already had a miracle mentality that it wasn't just the fact that we were lower income. Because mm -hmm. my mother would always say, we may be lower income, but we're not lower class. Yes. Uh, but my mother really helped, and my father really helped with having a mentality that life is not just what you see. Right. In front of you. Right, mm -hmm. not the visible. Exactly. Uh -huh. But you, you had some kind of something happen when you were young. Yes. Right? Very much so. So one of the things that happened is that, um, first of all, 
um, what happens with a lot of African American families in the inner city, somebody takes you to church. <laughs> and so uh, church was good for me because they were telling me these Bible stories about this guy, Noah, and he, he yeah. built this ark and it is Abraham was too old to have a child and then he did <laughs> and that was like watching like Walt Disney to a kid like me because right, right. it was it was a it was a world beyond right but at the age of 10 my father is simply going to get my mother food going through a green light and unfortunately a man ran a red light mm. and hit him and my father was instantly taken from us mm. but but doctor that was so difficult because my father was the joy in the house. My right. mother was a disciplinarian. Oh, that's just reverse. Yes, mm -hmm. and so um, when you lose that joy that my father brought, um, I tell many people, it, it was almost like the oxygen got sucked out of the room. Mm. And I remember, because uh, I'm the youngest of, of the five, that the older siblings, they were always just staying at friends' houses. Mm -hmm. And my brother was about five years older, and I was 10, so he was 15. He would make excuses to stay at friend's house too. So a lot of times it was me and my mother in this really tough environment. So I was, I was looking for hope. Mm -hmm. I was looking for hope. Mm -hmm. So what, what actually was the catalyst for ch change for you? I mean, yeah. what, what happened? The catalyst for change was, again, back to the church world that people the, brought me to. Third grade. Yes. Something happened. Yes. Wow. Um, well, what happens to me is a school teacher mm -hmm. uh, says, Timmy, can you stay after class? Mm -hmm. And I stay after class. And um, he says to me, I want to tell you something. I think you are, I didn't know what he was going to say. I think you are brilliant. And he says, because you are brilliant, I want you to start reading some books that are outside of the the classroom. And um, could you imagine being branded brilliant at right. such a young age? Yes. Because my mother <clears throat> just never said words like that to me. Mm -hmm. And so what I like about what I did when he branded me brilliant, I didn't push the words away. Mm -hmm. I, I, I it's, it's like I snatched them out of the air and just put it on my heart. Right. Mm -hmm. That changed your changed your whole paradigm. It really did. And 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 now that I understand more about the miracle mentality is that this idea of a miracle as you know is something extraordinary, uncommon, not normal, not natural. Right. Right. right okay. Right. This is what he was saying. He says right. you you know, I think you are this and I didn't push it back. I took it. Right. Can you imagine what would happen if every kid had that kind of experience wow. instead of saying, you know, your ADHD, your mm -hmm. this or that. I mean, sometimes people will say that, for instance, the Dalai Lama. Yes. You know, ever since he was an infant, they would look at him and say, well, you are the reincarnation of this Lama, this Lama, this Lama. You're brilliant. You have all this wisdom. He grows into it. Yes. But what if every kid was told that from the time that they were born? You are magnificent. You come from a lineage straight from God. Yes. You have all the intelligence of the universe flowing mm -hmm. through you. There's nothing you don't have. I mean, what if we were told that from the time we understood language? That is so true. You know? And as you know, <clears throat> uh, some people call that the law of reproduction, mm -hmm. that like produces like. Right. And so I think, as, you, as you're as you noting, that when, when children are, are brought up and people are really focusing on their weaknesses. Right instead of focusing on their strengths. Right. A, a kid will diminish with their weaknesses rather than soaring with their strength. Right, because that's what they're focused on. Mm -hmm. And what, what, you, what you think about, you bring about. You put your attention there, you magnify it. So good. So you're, you, something in you yes. accepted the word brilliant. Yes. Whereas you could have said, no, not me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then that shifted your whole dynamic. Now you have something where you talk about mundane. Yes. And then you move from the mundane to what's the next one? The messy. The messy, and the then madness. The madness. Then the miracle. Yes. Okay, break those four things down to Okay, me. so this is this is about observation and okay. the fact that you go to so many countries as well. One of the things that we get a chance to do is see people in various countries, whether right. it be me being in Stockholm, Sweden, mm -hmm. or us being in South Africa. Right. I, I, and I would watch people and I would see that a lot of people were kind of stuck in the mundane. The mundane is the regular. Mm -hmm. 
the the status quo. Mm -hmm. It's almost a, like a chore or a duty. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all have to do some mundane things, maybe like throwing the trash or going to the DMV. Right. But I I believe as you do that we can master the mundane. Right. Okay. But here's the other thing that both of us see a lot of people in, is that the messy can hit your life. Mm -hmm. The the messy might be a life interruption. It could mm -hmm. be a challenge in your relationship. Mm -hmm. It could be a challenge in your health. The messy hits. But if you're not careful and you don't manage that messy in the correct way, mm -hmm. and you're so great at teaching on that, even with mindset, if you don't manage that messy, it will it will escalate and go to a place of from messy to this madness mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And and this is what we see saw even in the pandemic. Right. Where madness hit right. the world. Right. And that madness is that chaotic. And in the midst of that, it's hard to realize there are miracles all over your table and they are lost in your messy and your madness. Right. And then that's exacerbated mm -hmm. by our media. Yes. Who give us the messy at least two times a day. Exactly. And they assist in driving people mad because people lose their anchor. They lose their faith. They lose um, that inner strength if they even have it. Yes. And then suicide rates have gone up. Depression mm -hmm. has gone up. So how do you assist people in navigating the messy? I know you talk about it. Uncommon. Yes. Faith. Yes. Common focus. Right. You mm -hmm. know, how do you how do you help people into that? Dynamic? Okay. So I think that one <clears throat> of the things that I love about your teaching as well is that both of us help people to take inventory on their lives. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we can get going so quickly in life that we don't we don't take time to to stop and meditate. Mm -hmm. And in that meditation, take inventory on truly where am I? Yeah. Because I think some people, they start to slowly move from that mess to the madness. And if they're not meditating every day, if they're not taking inventory, then they don't take the time to say, hey, I need, I need to find a way to halt this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw something recently, a, um, a Kung Fu master saying something that I like to say, he says, you have to give yourself space yes. to go into space, mm -hmm. you know, and you use the word meditative, which is the foundation, one of our foundational principles here, is that when you turn within and you see where you are, yes, then you can also see, ultimately see who you are, mm -hmm. and you see that you're not the mess. The mess is temporary. Yes. The mess is passing through. Mm-hmm. Unless people take the space, they identify themselves with the mess. They think that's their identity. Yeah. And, and then it's corroborated by evidence. Yes. So what we're trying to do is help people go in, take inventory, but then begin to see through meditation and prayer, you're not, that's not who you are. Right. That's mm -hmm. a those are temporary thought forms that are passing through. So again, there's <clears> another <throat> thing that I love about what you just did is when you say the mess is passing through, yes, it, it's almost like uh, in the Los Angeles area, as you know, recently, uh, mm. everyone talked about a hurricane is coming. Okay. Yes. So, so depending on what sources you got this information from, some people were already in the madness <laughs> state, right? Yes. But, That's not funny, but I, I remember yes. seeing people scurry around and buying more toilet paper again and mm -hmm. just going, just like, Wow. Yes. They were already in the fear. 100%. Of worst case scenario. And yes. we're not saying don't be prepared. Mm -hmm. But you're right. People went yeah. into madness. Yes. So, so they went into madness. And so, but you talk about just now about the storms of life passing through. Because it was the very next day from this hurricane that I was in Laguna Beach with some tourists. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw all these people. It was sunny. Right. They were happy. Right. They right. were breathing. Right. And I think so many people that are watching right now, you don't understand that just around the corner, beautiful things are about to happen in your life. Right. And, and if you make that mess permanent by choice without realizing it's just a storm passing through. The scripture, it says, you know, we see through a glass darkly. Yes. You know, so individuals are actually seeing through limited perception. Mm -hmm. And they're exp the thing about it is they're experiencing that perception 
even if the thing doesn't happen. Yes. So the people that went into madness actually produced toxic chemicals in their body. Wow. They actually inhibited their immune system. Mm -hmm. they, they stopped the coherence of their brain. So now they're not open to guidance and wisdom. They can't even hear the spirit speak to them. Yes. They did all of that mm -hmm. before anything even happened. Yes. <laughs> Wow. It, you know, before it even happened. They... So, so what you're saying is in the middle of a lockdown, you truly can lock down yourself in the middle of a lockdown. Right. You can, you can, you can hurt yourself. Yeah. It's actually, you know, uh, neuroscientists would tell us that if you go into intensive worry or even intensive gossip, yes, you're causing yourself brain damage because you're constricting blood, you're producing toxic chemicals, you're actually hurting yourself, mm -hmm. you see? Yes. And so uh, I, 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 you talk about the glow of yes. the, the glow of the miracle. Yes. The men miracle mentality. Yes. And this is where you're trying to bring people to. Exactly. And I like what you just said too about right around the corner, some good's trying to happen. Because 100%. The presence of God is good yes. everywhere. So Isaiah 46 verse nine through 12 says, for God knows the end from the beginning, and he knows what is yet to unfold. Right. And so, you know, we've been around each other for so many years. I see you continually unfolding. Yes. You are unfolding. Yes. You see my growth. Yes. I am unfolding. Yes. And if you're not careful as a person, people will fold before they're unfolding. I like that. <laughs> Don't fold before you're unfolding. They'll fold, they'll fold over before they unfold. Mm -hmm. No, that's beautiful because, I, I like the word unfolding because you take a, a rose seed, yeah. plant it in the right condition, and then that which is in there, so the farmer knows the, the end before the beginning. The farmer knows. So powerful. Already within that seed is a full-blown rose and perhaps a rose garden. Yes. So the presence of God knows the Christ essence within us, knows mm -hmm. infinite potential, even though we don't know it. Yes. And, and already knows the end. Mm -hmm. But the thing about the difference between a rose and us is we have to participate in it. I love that. You know, so, so the, the work that you're doing, the yeah. work that I'm doing, we're trying to help people participate in their own unfolding. Yes. That means you can't, you can't stay in blame, you can't stay and complain. You have to actually do some kind of practice. I love it. I love it. So people get caught up in the mundane, the messy, the, the madness. But this, the miracles, in my opinion, miracles are either coming or going at all times. I agree. And that many times the miracle has already come and it's there, but it's, it's lost in the clutter. Right. So, you know, traditionally as church people, would pray for you know God to do something and and travail and pray and fervent prayers. Truly, the miracle was was already it, it was already there. It, Before it you already, ask, I've already given. So powerful, <laughs> it was there. It was there. Yeah. So I, that, I agree with that because I think prayer, a lot of prayer, is really about me cleaning up my own awareness so I can see the miracle. Yes. So I can see the gift that's already been given me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, God can't give me any more than what God has already given me. Yes. Because God's given me God's life. Yes. In God's breath. Mm -hmm. So I've got everything. That's, that's why Jesus said, who by taking thought can add one cubit to your stature. You can't, so, so you can't add anything to you. But if you don't see it yes. or accept it, you're living in a different world that God sees. For yes. You. So, so as you teach as well, so in order to access this, you have to get a miracle mentality. Yeah, break that down for us. So a, a mentality, again, is a mindset. Yeah, it's a perspective. It's a point of view. Right. So, um, two people can go to the same party, and if there's a hundred people, they can come back with a different report of what that party was like. Right. Depending on who they talk to in the party, where they sat in the party or stood in the party. Right. It's a perspective. Right. And so, the miracle mentality is your mindset. And your mindset, and, and I found out this quote has been said for about 100 years, your mindset is yours to set. Yeah. Your right. mindset is yours to set. So, right. so again, in studying you all these years, you became a master in the mindset. But how did that happen to you where, where you just knew starting 
when you wake up, you choose to, oh, to absolutely. set your mind. Oh, yeah. Talk to us about that. When I wake up, the first thing I do is I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful that I exist. Yes. This is a gift. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for the gift. Now I want to re-gift it. Okay. You know, not the way you re-gift a Christmas gift if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you want to you want to share this gift. So I'm grateful and thankful. That's the first thing I do. Yep. And then I surrender to life, we, capital L life, which is God. Yes. Because God is the universal, omnipresent, omniscient, omniactive, omnipotent, everywhere. That's yes. life. Mm -hmm. I surrender to it. I, I give my, myself over to it. And then I say, in substance, give me the strength to handle every assignment that comes my direction today. Yes. That's more than what's on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got what I'm supposed to do today, but I don't know what else is going to happen. That's out of my control. Yeah. Somebody may come into my orbit that I may have to assist or counsel or whatever. Mm -hmm. So those three things occur. Yes. So my mind, I'm not going to jump into my to-do list yet. I'm going to jump into gratitude. Yes. Then I do a little bit of physical exercise. Mm -hmm. I drink water, yes. uh, warm water with minerals and lemon. Yes. Start that off. I make a certain kind of tea. Then I go work out. Yes. Then I come back home and I meditate. You know, so my whole first part of my day, I, I'm, I'm in God's agenda. I I'm, so love this. You know, so so doesn't mean I don't have challenges. Doesn't mean things don't go the way I want them to go, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm in a mindset that's going to keep me from complaining, you know, or blaming. Yes. So that I have more focus. So it's possible for everyone <clears throat> to be in divine alignment. Yes. And to make that choice and to not just live in the mundane or the messy or the madness, but to, to have the miracle mentality. Yes. And, and I walk in that, as well and people will say to me tim's story is so chill yeah <laughs> and and our, and our friend Smokey robinson said yeah, yeah he says brother it's like you got jazz music playing in your yeah. in your brain <laughs> right right true <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and so but but i try to tell you this is learned behavior you have to teach it i mean yes. it, i think it's natural but you have to do the work to bring it out i think that hate is unnatural Yes. You have to, a baby is not born hating. Mm -hmm. A baby doesn't, is not, is not bigotry, bigoted. A baby doesn't hate poor people. Yes. You know, a baby's just love. Mm -hmm. The baby is trained to have a certain perception to not like a certain color of skin or whatever. Yes. But love is natural. We're, we're wired. I talked about this on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that, you know, there's a part of the brain called the, the corpus stratum. Yeah. And when you're feeling a sense of peace, we're, we're here hanging out in a very peaceful vibration, mm -hmm. uh, talking about life. That part of the brain is stimulated. Yes. It, it responds to love. It doesn't respond to hate. However, you can give it a, and you know about this, you can give it a false response. You can give your body some cocaine. Yeah. It'll stimulate that, mm -hmm. but that will create an addiction. So true. So, you, so you'll look outside of yourself for love and joy. Yes. You know, alcohol addiction, whatever it is. Oh, yeah. But if you do the natural way, you come into the miracle mentality through gratitude, prayer, meditation, spiritual practices, you stimulate that and you, be, you begin to see you're wired for peace. So you're powerful. You're wired for love. This is, this is, God has wired us yes. for love. So when you, when you step into the miracle mentality, there's two things that I would like to talk about. One is that there are certain attributes or characteristics that happen when you have a miracle mentality. And one of them is a peace that comes to your life. Yes. Because- That's that jazz inside your head. That's that jazz <laughs> in my head, man. Because I, I know that somehow, some way, somehow, some way that I'm gonna get through this. Absolutely. Because it's that miracle mentality. It's almost like, because we're living in LA, we, 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 we both know about like buildings can shut down or you have to change where you meet or uh, mm -hmm. yeah. situations, okay? Where a lot of people will get into the messy on that right. and get all you know up in arms. But when you have a miracle mentality, one of the attributes is a, a piece mm -hmm. of, you know what, I, I will find a way. Right. Uh, even if there is no way. Right. So, so, that, so one is peace is is an is an attribute. Another is joy. Yes. And I'm telling you, I have walked in divine joy since I was a child. Mm. 
Mm. Even though, you know, people have died in my life, like my own father and right. siblings. But I tell you, doctor, I, 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 I walk in joy. Yes. I walk in joy. Joy is fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I, I like what you're saying. That, that I try to teach people the same thing. You, you develop a feeling and you lean into this feeling that everything's going to be okay. Yes. Because you can use the same power and go into worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. What if this doesn't work out? What if this doesn't work out? Then, then this is going to happen. Then I'm going to be homeless and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can, you can train yourself to lean into, you know, I don't know the way right now. Yes. I don't know the answer right now. But I know within me there is something that knows this. And it begins with the feeling. The yes. feeling provides the healing, mm -hmm. you know? So you lean into that feeling, and that's how I live. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember, you were talking about moving buildings. I remember we had a flood at our old building, and we were looking for a new place to meet. And I was chill. Yeah, I, You know, the board was saying, well, we, we have this place over here. Why don't we sign the contract? I was saying, no, that, that's not it. Yes. And, uh, and I'm sitting in my office. Time is, you know, ticking. And all of a sudden, it just hits me. Hmm. Call Rabbi David Baron. Mm -hmm. Just It just came into my oh, mind. Yeah. I called him. He said, we would love to have you have this building to use. It just, But it just flowed so easily. And the backstory is just so many miracles came out of that. Oh, yeah. You know, but I couldn't get into worry or anxiety because then I wouldn't hear the voice of the Spirit. So, so, so powerful. You know, I had to, had to be still and say, okay. So you have the attributes of the miracle <clears throat> mentality. Then you have the benefits. Yeah. And this is where I watch your life really flow because uh, you, you, you started the Agape Center how many years ago? We're in our 37th year. Okay. So um, I started the Hollywood Bible study in 1991 mm -hmm. at the house of Diane Cannon. Mm -hmm. and Diane Cannon, you know, used to come to Agape. I know that. And so um, Every Sunday. Yeah. she would she would talk a lot of great things about you. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I started seeing more and more entertainers come around. Yeah. And so many would talk about, I go to the Agape Center, I go to the Agape Center, I go to the Agape Center. Mm -hmm. And it's an, it's an interesting thing to me because I've watched you never chase this thing. You, you never chased celebrity or no. chased celebrity followers. But I think one of the uh, things that happened to you by having a miracle mentality and teaching on the miracle mentality is it, it drew those types of people in the entertainment business who a lot of them do have extraordinary thinking. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, create, they're creators. They're creatives. They're, they're creative people. And they like the, they like the creativity of the yes. spirit coming through. Mm -hmm. And people know that, one, I don't believe there are special people. I believe there are people who specialize. Like, if somebody can get on the piano and kill it, yeah. you know, that's because they put a lot of years yes. into making that happen. So mm -hmm. they weren't special, they specialized. Yes. So I don't, I don't chase celebrities or anything like that, but I know that everyone has some kind of gift. So I, I treat everybody the same. I see that. God is in everybody. Yeah, so when, I, when I've you been know. to see you, uh, <clears throat> and for those that have never come, you'll love it, and you'll see uh, just a lot of love and unity from people from all walks of life. Right, right. All walks of life. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants the the activation, not just the words that we can memorize, but the activation of that spirit. And that only comes about, if, as you say, if you're in the miracle mentality yourself. Yes. You glow with it. You, mm -hmm. It's in your silence. Yes. It's not even, you don't have to say anything. You just walk yeah. into a room and everybody's happy. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know? thank, thank you. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that I started getting that a lot uh, at, a, at an early age and being around uh, people like a Quincy Jones since yeah. I was in my yeah. 20s. Yeah. And Quincy would say to me, Tim, I'm gonna tell you one reason I like you around. He goes, just cause I feel good coming out of you. <laughs> I and love that. That's a nice thing, right? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> my, my mother used to play cards with Quincy Jones back in the day. <laughs> that's before interesting. Before he was even famous. Yeah. They were, they were buddies. And uh, we, we, I know Quincy from Bay. He was trying to give me a TV show at one point. Yes. He said, I'm going I'm to do you Probably right. Probably a talk show, maybe? Yeah. He said, I'm going to do you right after I do magic. You remember that? 
and we tried Magic Johnson. <laughs> yeah, they called it the Magic Hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't bad. No. Uh, but, okay, so Miracle Mentality, so you have the attributes, but then you have the benefits. Yeah. Okay. This is what I think, I'm gonna ask you a question. This miracle mentality is your reality. You would you agree with this, oh, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So when when you were at USC, okay. Oh, you did a little research on me. Oh no, I know you from way back. <laughs> so when you were at USC, <clears throat> what what were you thinking about? Like, what did you think you were becoming? Well, before right right before I checked into USC, I had come from Morehouse College. Yes. And. I'll just tell you a little brief story. I was in a meeting and we had an ideology to change the world. And, mm -hmm. you know, we were working with the Black Panther Party, Black Workers Congress. And I was sitting in this meeting and someone said, if you were to take over the world tomorrow, would it be any better? So I looked around, there was nobody sitting there. Mm -hmm. The meeting went on and the next voice came out of me. If you were to take over the world tomorrow, would the world be any better? And I looked around the room and I could see the pathology in people. I mean, yeah. This, per this person over here always had to be right. This person was territorial. I could just see all this. Incredible. Thing. And I said, wow, the world wouldn't be any different. Didn't matter what the ideology was, the mm -hmm. world was not gonna be any different. I left that meeting, never went back. The next week, somebody in that meeting shot somebody. I got into an argument and shot somebody in the meeting. Wow. But I wasn't there for any of that madness. Oh yeah. So anyway, I checked into USC as a psychobiology major. I was gonna go to med school. I, I, was, I was really involved, interested in healing. Yeah. And that's when I began to have a series of inner experiences. I had some as a kid, but mm -hmm. I would push them away. Yes. You know, like mm -hmm. you, I had a lot of oh, wonderful yeah. things happen as a child. And, uh, but at that time, these experiences started happening and I, I died in a lucid dream, I got killed, and when I woke up, I could see differently. Yes. The presence of God, of love and beauty mm -hmm. everywhere. The beauty and the love penetrated my being, and my whole, I could never get back in that normal box again. Yes. And so, I, 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 had, I, I, just, just, I had to go on a research to discover what had happened to me. And then that's when I bumped into the mystical teachings of Jesus. Yes. Buddha, mm -hmm. Kuan Yin, Zoroaster, Walter, all these mystics who were saying the same thing in different ways. Because I was agnostic. Yeah. Okay. I remember this. So this brought me all back to mm -hmm. my childhood, tied it all together. But I didn't still think I was going to be a public minister. I didn't, I didn't think I was yeah. going to be a minister. Mm -hmm. That was not my thing. I, I, it's not. But the spirit had something else. But I think it's so interesting that... <clears throat> this idea of you having to be open yeah. to what was next. Yes. And this this whole idea of the becoming and the the unfolding. Yes. Because I was in um I was recently in Estonia mm -hmm. and a lot of people at this particular conference were bringing up your name. Mm -hmm. And I almost texted you from there just to say you know, man, I'm so proud of you because you're over there in L.A. right now, even though you travel the world. And there's all kinds of folks talking about, you know, Dr. Michael Beck within, in Estonia. Wow. So when you were at USC, you're not thinking someday I'm going to no. affect people in Estonia? No, absolutely. I remember walking across campus. Uh, you know, I used to hang out with. Veronica Porsche. Yes. <laughs> she, one day she, I came and she wasn't in front of Tommy Trojan. I said, where's yeah. Veronica? She said, Muhammad Ali just took her to Africa. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and then her daughter, Layla, grew up in Agape. Yes. You know? yes. Anyway, I remember walking across campus and this lady, a student, mm -hmm. dropped her books. So I stopped to help her books. She was crying. I yeah. Her books. And she says, um, I said, what's, what's wrong? And she says, no, I'm going to the financial aid office, but they're giving me the runaround, I can't get my money, I'm, I'm gonna just drop out and go to go to work. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how much more do you have time do you have to graduate? And she said, two years. And I said, four semesters? She said, four semesters. She went back into the financial aid office. Mm -hmm. Never saw her again until years later. Yes. I run, her, run into her at the Bodhi tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she says, Michael Beckwith? I said, yes. She said, you changed my life. 
I said, what are you talking about? He says, you stopped at USC's campus and told me I only had four semesters. It changed my whole mindset. Incredible. I went back in and waded through the financial aid office and their resistance toward me, got my money, and graduated. That is so powerful. But I never, I, it was just me just saying, yes. helping somebody with their books. Yes. And having a brief conversation, but I didn't know that it changed somebody's life. With, with the right mentality, you with know. the right mindset, as you just did with her, always comes her, the better words. Yeah. And you gave her better words and she was speaking. Yeah. So I talk about believing in miracles, which as, as both of us study, most people believe in miracles to a certain degree, something right. supernatural. But here's what I find, most people don't expect them. Yeah. Me and mundane. you expect miracles. Yeah, they're living in the mundane. Yes, <clears throat> we expect. So uh, I was over a friend's house and I had forgotten something and he has an amazing house, and he said, Tim, uh, let's order it, because uh, I have, this is funny, I have Amazon Prime, right, right, right. And, I, and I at that time I said, well, what is that? He says, it will come guaranteed overnight. Mm -hmm. He was so excited about his Amazon Prime, so <laughs> I'll never forget at a certain time, he opened the door, and sure enough, there was that, that, that package. Right. So we expected it based on the fact that he had faith in Amazon Prime. Right. So. You unload a little bit on me on when you think of expectation, right? what goes through your mind? Because you expect miracles. I like expectation to become um, participation and anticipation to become participation. Okay. So I'm actually shifting my mind and participating in a flow. Expectation is keeping it a little bit in the future. Okay. So I start to participate in the feeling that it's happening right now. Okay, I've never, I've never thought of it that way. That is so good. Yeah. So, what are some ways we can participate as we are moving you're towards? Interviewing that? me? Yeah, but, I, <laughs> but you're teaching me. Sorry for getting the free teaching right no, that's now. That's okay. That's okay. So, I have people do this. Think about a moment, okay. any time in your life, in which all of your needs are met, you're loved and supported. Okay. You're getting everything you need. Just, just get that feeling. Okay, now take that feeling and now think about what you're trying to bring into your life. Wow. So you have the feeling that it's already done. Yeah. But you're holding the image of what you're trying to bring into manifestation, but you're not putting it into the future. Yes. The feeling tone is happening now, so I teach people how to do that. So you're actually living in the miracle mentality. Yes. Which is a participation. Mm -hmm. So I say, we're not anticipants, we are participants. Yes. You know, we're participating with the presence. Okay, I will quote you on that everywhere I go because that is so good because I think that, as you said prior, that so much for people is when I graduate. Yes. Or when I have children. Yes. Or when I get married. Yes. It's that expectation, but they always put it in the future. And what else they do is they think when that thing happens, okay. they're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. The happiness is temporary. Yes. Because when ha you get married, then you have issues. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have challenges. You have to grow together. Yes. You know, you get a new car, you're going to get gas, you got to change the oil. You, you know, there's everything you All get out there, there's work to be done. Mm -hmm. So the idea is not to wait to be happy then. You cultivate your happiness now. The piece you were talking about, the jazz in your head. Oh, yeah. You're cultivating that now. So what happens? I'm bringing happiness to my friendships and my relationships. Yes. I'm bringing a, a sense of order to my new car or whatever mm -hmm. it is. I'm not waiting for that to give it to me. Yes. I'm bringing it to the experience, mm -hmm. you see. So we're not putting the cart before the horse. Yes. You know, and we're not, we're, we're, pu we're putting the heart before the course, mm -hmm. you know, putting the heart. I, I, I like this. Yeah. So, you know, I actually wrote a book called The Miracle Mentality and Harper Collins was kind enough to publish it. And in this book, I say that you can go from believing in miracles, expecting miracles, to releasing miracles, where mm -hmm. we become miracle releasers. I like that. Where I, I, I find that there's times where I'll go into a place and they'll say, Tim, we didn't even know you were gonna come, but wow, we, we really need you. Yeah. What do you think about this situation? Right. And so, in, in cases where we where we journey, yes, and that's that's what Jesus did. The yeah. Bible says Acts ten thirty eight. 
Jesus went about doing good yes. everywhere he went. Right. And Can you just stop right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a heaven of a mentality. Yes. It, what if people woke up and say, wherever I go, I'm going to do good? Powerful. Rather than everywhere I go, I'm going to get something. Powerful. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to acquire this. Yes. What if we all walked out and say, I'm going to be a blessing everywhere I went? You're still going to get what you need. You are. But you're going to start to live from the overflow. Yes. Yeah, I, I like that. Let me ask you something else. Mm -hmm. Even though you have, a, you have a very broad Christian lens. Yeah. You have seen the miracle mentality in all religions. 100%. All over the world. That was difficult for me at first because, mm -hmm. uh, again, when we started off in church at Compton, California, you, you're, you're coming from a certain perspective. Right. And then in seminary, they're giving you a certain perspective. Right. But I remember talking to an uh, amazing Buddhist lady in another country. And I said, when you pray, do you sense the presence of God? She goes, oh, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I, I sense him. And he is near me. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had to start to think, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Because the way I was taught, right. it's only coming from here or here. Right. So it was, it was in my travels that I was willing to ask the questions and willing to adjust and to grow. So there's a lady named Carol Dweck who, who teaches at Stanford and she, University. She talks about the fixed mindset or the growth mindset. Right. And I have a, I have a growth mindset. Yes. So I'm not limited in to just my my background and how I was traditionally taught. And I think that that has made me very inclusive and uh, uh, given me a better life and helped me to even help more people. That's Dr. Thurman mm -hmm. all the way. Yes. Who, who was obviously a great Christian mystic theologian. Yes. But embraced all paths yes. to, to awakening. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to Malcolm X. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. he had a very limited perception Mm -hmm. And then when he went to Mecca, and so all these different color Muslims, yeah, all having this deep spiritual experience, he could no longer be lim limit his attention to being a racist. Yes, you know, even though he still kept his nationalistic point of view, mm -hmm. but he changed his whole dynamic through travel. Yeah, and but I think that's that's what made you so unique to to me and to our friend Carlton Pearson and others. Yes who were so big just amongst like African-American leaders to the world. Right. Because, you know, um, it was always in these conferences. It was uh, uh, T.D. Jakes, Tim Story, Carlton Pearson. Yeah. Carlton Pearson, Tim Story, T.D. Jakes. That's just how we were brought up in this thing. Right. But when we looked at you and you were, you know, had this mega facility and helping people in such a mega way, I had to really stop and look and say, Okay, this man is really helping a lot of folks that sometimes almost uh, put a deaf ear to some of us because they see us just as religious right. people. Yeah, and so I res I respected you from the from the get go for being a person. Number one, as you said, you started off agnostic, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and so you were in search of. Uh, yeah, I left the church when I was sixteen. Mm -hmm. First, I grew up at Holman's Methodist Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I'm trying to remember the name of the church, but the minister, I love the minister because he would make the analogy between Roman Empire and the United States and how yeah. Jesus was a revolutionary, mm -hmm. very deep lover of God. Yes. And then the church transferred him. Yes. And brought this other guy in, mm -hmm. and he had a very limited perception of Christianity. Yes. So I left the church. I didn't want to have anything to do with it mm -hmm. anymore. And went to Morehouse College because Dr. King went there. Yes. I met Dr. Thurman there. Mm -hmm. Then I had my awakening. Yes. And then everything came together. Mm -hmm. And I was able to keep Jesus, but not necessarily keep all of the Christian pieces. Right. You see. And see, this is where I think a lot of people miss it is that um, they'll say to me, like, Tim, I see you on these platforms with the Dalai Lama and other people, mm -hmm. and um, you should be careful. Well, th the thing is, I'm still very uh, ingrained with Jesus Christ, very connected to Jesus Christ. But I understand also people come from different cultures, traditions. It's Eight billion people on the planet. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. every culture, you know, when you, when you look at all of the great teachers that have arisen on the planet yeah. at different times, you know, and you break down what they're saying, there's a similarity in the teachings. Yes. They may call, one may call it enlightenment. 
Mm -hmm. Somebody else may call it Christ consciousness. Yes. You know, but they're talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and if the if the perception is too limited, and there's fundamentalism in every religion. Yes. Every religion, there are people that would say, well, if you don't follow this strict path, you're going to go to hell. You're an infidel. You're going to go to hell. But as you expand, you appreciate, as Gandhi tried to teach, you appreciate everybody's path. Yeah. Rather than just pick it apart. And it's a, it's interesting thing. I think that in the in the statement that you just made of people talking about the heaven and hell, with, within so many churches, there was almost a power that the that the minister felt in saying that. Yeah. And I didn't like I didn't it's like fear, it. Fear based. Very fear based. And I didn't I didn't I didn't like the tone of it. Mm -hmm. And even as a kid I thought that's 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 not settling with yeah. who I am and how I know God the Father. Yeah, I'm going to scare you. Yeah, in, in, into that. And I, I remember, you know, I had this awakening. And my mother and a good friend of the family named Lissa wanted me to go to this church, mm -hmm. and I was saying, I don't really want to go to church. I'm, I'm really cultivating this deep feeling with God. His mm -hmm. presence is it's real. It's real to me. It's not. Yeah figment of my imagination to change my whole character mm -hmm. and they said no you're gonna like this church and I said I don't know if they speak truth in church yeah you know anyway I went mm -hmm. and it was a metaphysical church it mm -hmm. was the guidance church of religious science founded mm -hmm. by dr. Daniel L. Morgan mm -hmm. I arrived I'm in my 20s yeah. I arrive a little late and he's on the pulpit and he's yeah. saying heaven and hell aren't really places they're states of consciousness mm -hmm. and I said he's right because mm -hmm. I'd been I've been deep in, in this presence. Yeah. And everybody turns around and looked at me. <laughs> and what's this young boy talking yeah. about? He's right. Yeah. You know? And uh, <laughs> and that was a Sunday. The next day, I'm sitting in his class. And he asked me my name. I said, Michael Beckwith. He says, well, Mr. Beckwith, this is a 15-week class. You've arrived here week seven. I think you need to leave and come back when we start the class over. Mm -hmm. I say, with all due respect, Dr. Dan, I'm going to stay in the class. When it starts over, I'll start over from the beginning. Love it. And he said, "Have it your way." Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but you know, he was he was teaching metaphysics. Yes. And and he was the love of Jesus the Christ, mm -hmm. but from the metaphysical point of view. Yes. And it was exactly what was happening in my awareness as I was getting all of these downloads. And an interesting thing is, as we were talking about, you began to release miracles yeah. on other people. We, we see this in a lot of people, whether you look at um, Gandhi, you look at Mother Teresa, you look at um, Norman Vincent Peale, you look yeah. at yourself, you look at Oprah. There's you look at people, Nelson Mandela, who no, wasn't even Mandela. religious. But when he went through his forgiveness piece, that changed the whole nation. Whole nation. And he became the high watermark as to how we can live on the planet. Yeah. If people didn't go to war, Mm -hmm. first but actually went to that truly a great presence uh nelson mandela yeah right yeah oh yeah i remember meeting him at a parliament of world religions in south africa and when he came out he dealt with us as if we were the only person in the room incredible so when he shook my hand and spoke to me mm -hmm. nobody else existed yeah and I had a, a friend that I invited in, uh, Kevin Ross. Kevin Ross wanted to meet him. Well, he had, oh, yeah. came in. Oh, and, yeah. And other people. But he was just very present, mm -hmm. you know. Was He wasn't, you know, half his 80s at that time. But, you know, he was, just, he was just present. Yeah. You know, when you think about the miracle mentality, why do you think of someone like a Maya Angelou, why was her works and her writings and her poems why do they affect so many people? I think because, uh, one of the reasons I believe, when you look at her life story, he mm -hmm. went through, she went through a lot of hells. Yeah. And came out, you know, uh, loving yeah. life, oh, yeah. loving who she was, yeah. loving the presence of God. Mm -hmm. You can trust people, I think, who've gone through hell yeah. and come out. You know, we, we say in our teaching sometimes, religious people are trying not to go to hell Spiritual people have already been there. <laughs> That's very powerful. You know, very so she powerful. went through a lot of hells, mm -hmm. and so the spirit was really real to her. Because that's how she she I mean, she lived so many lifetimes in one lifetime. Yeah. So when she wrote 
poetry, mm -hmm. the phenomenal woman, or she wrote, you know, I'm gonna tell you why the caged bird sings. Wow. She knew. She knew. It wasn't. It wasn't just. She knew. You know, so her poetry, I think, was full with yeah. her life. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that, and I think that with the with the the miracle mentality, this mindset, it helped me not to get dramatic in the midst of the drama. Yeah, that's oh, I like that. I do not get dramatic. I might have to quote you. Quote me on that. <laughs> I don't get dramatic in the midst of drama. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. In fact, this is a funny one. Um, you know, if you do well in life, someone's going to try to sue you for something you didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> we, we live in such a litigious uh, oh, yeah. culture. And this it's one, true. this one had to do with a person came to my event, and there was um, there was ice on the ground, and they 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 sued the place that had the event and the people put on the event and they try to sue me as a speaker at the event. You take, created the weather. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> they slipped at the event. But you're going to love this. I was speaking to about 1,400 people at this other event. And as I'm speaking, a man shows up and he's got a, a jacket and a, and a shirt and a crooked tie. Mm -hmm. And he literally had a, 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 a yellow uh, folder and he said, in front of everybody, you've been served. I promise you. Mm -hmm. And I am so calm. Right, right. I said, well, thank you, sir. And I took it because I didn't know someone was going to serve me. All right. And I just took it and I said, just a second. I said, let me fix your tie. And I'll fix his tie. <laughs> I said, let's give this man a hand for doing his job. <laughs> That's and was much, that was right? that the lawsuit about the ice? Yeah, about the ice. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, not being dramatic in the midst of drama. No, I refuse. <laughs> it reminded me of uh, I was with um, James Lawson. Yes, and he was telling me a story <laughs> about uh, him and Dr. King. Yeah, they they were going to this place to speak, and so Dr. King was getting ready to go speak, and this man walks up to him and says, "Are you Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.?" Says, "Yes, I am, sir." And that man spat on him. Wow. And Dr. King took out his handkerchief and took the spit and folded it in a really neat napkin and says, I think this belongs to you, sir. Incredible. And went up and tore the roof off the, off the building. Incredible. But um, that's that's no drama in the midst of the dramatic. Yeah, to all those watching, you yeah. can live this way. Yeah. You can you can live this way. Right. Oh yeah, I'm not moved by prejudiced people yeah. or all the <laughs> silliness that comes at us. Right. I'm not moved by it. Right. Hey, this is Tim's story. Tell them the name of your book again. Tell them how they can get in touch with you. And, okay. Because you, you, aren't you starting a podcast with, with Deepak Chopra? Yes. You're going to do something together? Uh, we're going to do some. I mean, he's both of our friends, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, we do things already on mental health. Okay. We're starting a new podcast together. So Tim's story, S-T-O-R-E-Y, and the name of my book is The Miracle Mentality. The Miracle Mentality. And you can just get a hold of me on timstory.com. S T O R E Y timstory.com. Do you have a presence on Instagram as well? I do, a very strong one. Okay. So we're That's on right, Instagram. You're like a million people or something, two million or something. Yes, something crazy. yes. So we're two point two million. Uh, Tim Story official, and uh, I do videos on there, and I like humor, so a lot of my videos are are fun. Beautiful. Hey, wonderful people. This is Tim Story. This is Michael Beckwith, and all of this, this miracle mentality. This is about taking back your own mind not allowing the world and the world of effects and circumstances and situations to determine your destiny, to determine your moods. You take back your own mind. You move through the mundane. You move through, what's the next one? The messy. You move through the messy. Let it move. The madness. Yes. Coming to the miracle zone. As he said, we can live this way for real. Real. Go in, find out who and what you really are. Realize that that which is happening is not who you are, it's not what you are, it's just passing through you. You can live in the miracle zone. Have a bright day. Blessings everyone. You know by now if you've participated in Take Back Your Mind podcast that we always have a brief meditation moment because it's essential, it's necessary. It's necessary for you to take space so that you can become spacious inside. And what do you discover? Just as you've heard me and Tim talk, you go inside and you discover where you are 
and what you are and what's passing through. Remember the statement, the unexamined life is not worth living. Remember that statement? So when you go into meditation, you are bringing your attention inward. You can notice your mood. You can notice where you are in your perception, what you are in terms of what's passing through. Then ultimately, you notice what's watching all of that. And that which is passing through is not you. You can even go into the subjective feeling of what you're witnessing and really and realize that's not you either. You can just witness it all and ultimately become free, liberated from time, become spacious, and become an avenue of more good than you can possibly imagine. Let's close our outer eyes and turn within. Let's take a deep breath. Release. Become aware that the body is breathing. And that breath is happening presently. This breath is not happening in the past or the future. This breath is happening presently. So the breath is allowing you to be present as you are aware that the body is breathing. I didn't say you are breathing. The body's breathing. Now notice what's in your awareness. Is there happiness, rushing, Sadness, futurizing, hanging out in the past. Where are you? Just notice without judgment. And begin to notice what's noticing. You are awareness. You are witnessing. You are the witness. Even now. Now in this witnessing awareness, create an intention to wake up to your glorious nature. You're not what's passing through. You are the witnesser of what's passing through. You are awareness with intention. Your intention to wake up to your glorious nature. You hear noises, sounds, they're just passing through your sky of mind, passing through your awareness. You do not label it noise, you just note it, become aware that a sound is happening. It's passing through your awareness. 
you are aware that you are aware. Let us now just give thanks for our life. Slowly open our eyes. Hmm. Thank you. Your whole being is grateful for your willingness to participate in you waking up to your glorious nature. Those of you who have been subscribing to the podcast, sharing it with your friends, giving us the highest rating possible, thank you so very much. You may want to support the podcast by supporting the main sponsor, which is Agape International Spiritual Center. Please go to agapelive.com and make a donation to the sponsor. You may even want to write down podcast and make your donation. It would be highly appreciated. If you want to curate a greater degree of health, go to adaptazen at neutralize.com and order the bundle of superfood greens, 47 different plant-based ingredients, along with probiotics, prebiotics, and digestive enzymes, and adaptogens. Rhodiola, maca, ashwagandha. It's very powerful. It tastes good, too. And in that bundle comes vitamin D3, K2, essential for your health. So you're not only supporting our sponsors, but you're supporting your good health. Have a beautiful day. Your time is very valuable, so I want to thank you for lending us your ear and participating in taking back your mind. If you want to submit a question for the question of the week, please submit it to podcast at michaelbeckwith.com. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, please submit a review and let us know your thoughts. Stay on top of current episodes by subscribing to the podcast so that you'll receive alerts and not miss one single episode. And feel free to share this podcast with all of your friends and family. And until we meet again, take back your mind and you will take back your life. Peace and blessings.